This screencast is about using WebStorm for building Dart applications. I will show how to download and set up WebStorm, create a command line Dart application, how to run it, debug it, and test it. Then I will show how to set up Dartium, debug web applications, compile them into JavaScript, and of course, how to use web components to build them. The first step is to download WebStorm, and there are two options available. You can get the latest stable version at jetbrains.com slash webstorm. Or download the EAP version, which comes with the latest version of the Dart plugin. I'm going to use the EAP version in this screencast. Alright, we have the IDE up and running. Let's see how we can check the version of the Dart plugin. Click on About WebStorm to see the version of the IDE. To check the version of the plugin, bring up Preferences. Search for plugins, and then search for Dart. WebStorm comes with a very nice code formatter. To customize it, search for Dart, and click on Code Style. Here, create a new scheme. Let's call it Screencast, and now change the settings. The preview panel will reflect all your changes. One of the most important things for every programmer is tweaking the color theme. To do that, create a new theme and then make all the necessary adjustments. Alright, we've learned how to install and configure WebStorm. I think we are ready to create our first Dart application. Start with creating a new empty project. Then click on the Dart icon to select the Dart SDK home path. Make sure you enable the Dart SDK. At this point, you can set up the directory structure of your application and add pubspec.yaml. Pubspec.yaml has only one dependency. To install it, right click on the file and run the install packages command. As you can see, the packages have been installed successfully. Now let's add a library, simple calculator, with one function that adds up two numbers. WebStorm can run command line Dart applications. Let me show you how to do that. But I have more interesting stuff in mind. I'm going to test this function. Obviously, I need to add a test file. Please note the auto completion for imports. Now let's add the test itself. And again, note working auto completion. Let's run the test, and it passes. To see the test fail, let's break the function and run it again. And here we go, a failing test. Restoring the original function. Another useful feature is code formatting. Let's add a few spaces, select the line, and here you go. So far, WebStorm supports only basic refactorings, but even those can be extremely useful. I can, for instance, extract a variable. Or rename it. In addition, WebStorm integrates with the Dart Analyzer. So if you mess up your types, you will see a warning. Overall, the Dart plugin is robust and pleasant to use, but there are a few issues I'd like to point out. When you make changes to your production library, the test library won't see the changes right away. For instance, I've just added a new function, but the IDE doesn't see this function when I'm inside the test library. To fix it, I run the synchronize command. And the issue is fixed. In general, when you see that the IDE is missing something, click on synchronize. 
Another issue is that the open file dialog shows duplicates. One way to deal with it is to exclude the packages folders, but it may break out the completion. Go to utrack.jetbrains.com to see the status of these issues and vote them up. Now we know how to use basic IDE features, such as creating projects, installing packages, working with code, and running tests. Having learned all this stuff, let's go ahead and build a Dart web application. This time, I am creating a Dart web application project instead of an empty one. By doing that, I am telling WebStorm to configure the Dart SDK and create a skeleton folding structure for our app. As you can see, it also created the pubspec.yaml file with one dependency in it. Next, I am creating an HTML file for our app. It looks like I forgot to install packages. Let me do that real quickly. Now I am adding web app to Dart. And to keep things as simple as possible, I am just querying the content div and rendering some static text into it. The next step is to configure WebStorm to use Dartium instead of Chrome. To do that, bring up the settings dialog and search for Chrome. Here, point the IDE to use Dartium. Next is to configure Dartium to work with WebStorm. And to do so, I am launching the browser, going to Chrome Web Store. Here I am searching for JetBrains. And finally, installing the extension. I'd like to point out that this setup has to be done only once. Alright, we have WebStorm and Dartium working with each other. Let's jump back into our project and start our application by clicking on Debug App HTML. And here is our message. This application is simple enough, so debugging is kind of silly, but I still want to show you how to do that. Let's add a breakpoint here and restart our app. The last thing regarding building web applications is compiling Dart code into JavaScript. To do that, we need to run Dart to JS. Right click on webapp.dart and here we go. I will use Safari to check that the compiled version works. What you've just learned is how to set up Dartium and WebStorm to work with each other. I've also shown how to create a simple web application, how to run it, debug it, and compile it into JavaScript. Of course I haven't forgotten about web components. I will show you how to work with them when using WebStorm. I'm starting with adding the web UI dependency, updating packages, Let's not be very creative and just use the counter component. Some cleanup. Just for now, I'm going to compile my app using this command. But I will show you how to set up WebStorm to do that in a second. Launching the app. As you can see, it's working. Suppose I've changed my component to increment the number by 2. I don't really want to switch between the IDE and the console all the time to run the compiler. What I'm going to do instead is to set up a file watcher that will recompile my app every time I change an HTML file. Let me show you how to do that. First, I need to add a build file that will recompile my app. Now I'm going to tell the IDE to run the build file every time an HTML file changes. And to do that, I'm bringing the preferences up and clicking on watchers. Here I'm adding a watcher and tweaking it a little bit so it will run the build file I created. Now I can make the desired change and without running anything in the console, see the change being reflected in the browser. That's it for today. I hope you found this screencast useful. Thanks for watching.